In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a ServiceNow powered copilot with Copilot Studio and Generative Actions. And I know I've had a video in the past that shows you how to do this with ServiceNow, but this is the way to build it with a real generative AI way that makes it amazing. So the first thing you should know is that you're going to need to go to ServiceNow's website uh, to be able to do this. And you're going to need to sign up for a developer instance. For the implementation that you're going to see today, I'm using the Vancouver version of ServiceNow. You can use whichever version you would like. You should be able to get the same results uh, that we're going to see today. But just be aware that this would be something that I would recommend you do um, if you don't already have a ServiceNow instance to be able to play with. So before I go into how I actually have built this uh, solution, what I want to do is first give you a demonstration of the power of this particular solution I've built. So within the solution, I just want to make sure you're aware that I've connected to ServiceNow through numerous mechanisms um, and different APIs and different uh, table queries. And I've also went and created a connection to our weather, uh, MSN weather API. And we'll go into the details of why all of this is important, but let's see what the assembly of all of this uh, means. So the th first thing I'm going to do, you could do this through an authentication, but for the, the purposes of this demo, I went ahead and I'm asking it to provide uh, the information. And notice I've got tracking turned on here so that you guys can see this work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I'm David Miller. And those of you who have developer instances, you'll know that this is just one of the example accounts that's inside of the system. So now that I've actually said that I'm David Miller, I can I can start to ask uh, information. I can say something like, uh, what is the status of my ticket? And when I do this, you're going to see that it's going to go try to figure out what particular topic will get me this. And you'll notice over here on the right that I have the dynamic chaining enabled. So by doing that, and because I have generative answers enabled, I can answer something and, I, and I'm going to show you an example of entity extraction because I can say uh, my ticket number is, and then I'll put in the ticket number. Now, because I built an entity that can extract the ticket number information, you'll see here that it actually answered the question and it gave me some information, but I might want to get more details. So let's say that I, I just say, give me more details, please. And what this is going to do is notice that it's doing the same thing. I'll turn on this just so that you can see it do the orchestration here on the back end, you'll see that it's actually using a dynamic chain and the conversation history to understand the ticket number that I'm talking about and passing this in to uh, the ServiceNow side of things. Now, let's, let's just go back here really quick so that you can watch this move again uh, on the right. So I'll move back to where you can see the navigation. But now I'm going to say something to it, uh, such as, um, what does my user prof, uh, profile have as my city? And so now what I'm going to do is go look up against the user profile and find out what is the city that this particular user is in. And notice here that it says your user profile has Atlanta as your city. Um, and then I can say, what is the weather there? Now, when I ask this, I'm switching over to a completely different context. But notice that what it did is it answered the question about the weather. Now, that wasn't in service now. And why did it do that? It did that because it passed the conversation history in. It realized that the city that I was asking about, because I asked about a city location, then I turned around and passed that in to be able to answer the question about the weather. And notice that I can actually say, I can ask follow-up questions about the weather. You know, I can say, what is the wind direction? And it's gonna, you know, give me the information about the wind direction. And it's going to do that off of the weather side. Now, I can also say, um, 
what is the weather in Nashville? And you'll see that it will change the information and it'll answer with Nashville because now that's in context. And I can also go as far as doing something multi-intent. Like I could say, uh, what is the status of my ticket and the weather in Atlanta? And what I'm doing here is showing you like a multi-intent situation. And because we uh, we now to kind of change the context of the conversation, you'll see it'll ask me about the ticket number again, of course, but, and I'm going to go ahead and put the ticket number back in, but let's just watch over here that what it's doing. So I'm going to give it the ticket number. You'll see it fill in the ticket number here, and then it went ahead and gave me the answer to, uh, to the Atlanta weather as well. And this is the concept of like uh, having numerous things uh, or multi-intent conversations. So notice I did it completed both actions and it dynamically assembled this whole implementation. So now I'm going to shift into how did I make this work? Like what did I need to do? How hard was this to actually uh, build out? Um, and what I'm going to do is kind of walk you through that piece. So if you want to see that part, just stay tuned in the video. That's where we will move forward now. Okay. So, so let's go look and see how did I actually um, build this. So the first thing is, is be aware. I'm not really using any fallback. I have Microsoft.com in here, but the key thing is I have the setting turned on for dynamic chaining right here. Now, when you do this, you're switching the orchestration or the conversational orchestration model that is done for the natural language understanding for like intent detection, entity extraction is being switched to a large language model when you do this. And by doing that, that's how you can see that I can pass conversation context because I'm not just passing a query and then looking at the intent. I'm passing a whole conversation history and looking at the the content of it. And that's how we were able to kind of play around with additional context and, and do things like pull Atlanta and I'm talking about Atlanta and passing that into something else. So this is really super valuable as you go through. So know that this is the setting. Now, once I go in and start looking at the topics, you can see here that I have all these different components here. Um, and I have some that are topics. I have some that are plugin actions. I have some that are system. So let's take a look at uh, a couple of things, which is plugin actions. So I have created some plugin actions that are built um, to handle certain things that I want. And you'll see some of these have dynamic chaining and some of them have none. The difference is whether or not I want them to be conversationally orchestrated to. So do I want them to act like a topic traditionally and be able to um, be routed to? In the case of some of these ServiceNow items, you'll see that I have it where dynamic chaining is turned off. And that is because a lot of the ServiceNow connectors have this capability in them where it's just basically a table lookup. So I actually need to do something a little more to be able to pass the data in to the input. And so I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. But you have other things like the ServiceNow get record item here. Let's take a look at it. And you'll see that dynamic change turned on and you can see what I've put in here. I've put a prompt on the model that explains what all you can do with it and that you can look up all these different pieces of information from your ServiceNow user ID and profile. And so now the large language model understands I can do that. You'll see over here that I have inputs that I'm passing through. And actually, none of these are dynamically being generated. I'm actually getting all of this information and passing it in. And you'll see specifically here where, and I'll break this formula out a little bigger for you to see, where what I'm actually doing is saying, hey, I want to get the sys ID from this ServiceNow user info result. Now, but where did that come from? Let me show you where that came from. So again, we're going to go back and we're going to take a look. And it, one of the things is system. If you look at conversation start, let's look at what I did. I have it where it says, hey, I'm a ServiceNow bot and all that type of stuff with your message. But I modified this to say in order to make you 
where you have to, in order to use the bot, you have to actually answer this question, which is I'm looking for an entity of an email uh, and I'm wanting you to give me your email address. Now, why I'm wanting that is I want to store that into a global variable. So if I ever want to use your email address again, I can, uh, and that's what you provided. But what I do is I take this and I actually kick off a Power Automate flow. Now you could do this a different way, but I'm going to show you the Power Automate flow just so that way you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go in here and edit this. And basically what I'm doing is I'm coming in to the Power Automate flow. I'm calling an HTTP connector, which is calling the ServiceNow API, and it has a query set in it so that what, it, what it's doing is it's querying to find the user by the email address. And so that is a list lookup against um, the sys user uh, table to be able to find the particular at email address that comes back. And then I'm just passing this body out of it as a string and then pushing this into back into uh, the other side. Now, once we get that, I wanted this to come in as a string so that I could also show you that I could parse this. Now I could do all of this in an HTTP node as well, but I wanted to kind of showcase both of the different technologies kind of working together in this so you could replace this whole thing with just a uh, http node and then set your record type to a string which is i'm taking the string that came back it's giving it um and it's created a record now what does that mean what that means is that inside the variables if i look at global here you'll see that i basically have all the user information right here for the user now, this is a cached copy so that I can do things and make logic off of it. And one of the things that I'm doing is I'm grabbing the sys ID. So how did I go look up in the actual authoritative system, the sys ID? Well, because you gave me your email address at the beginning, I have the sys ID and I can automatically pass that in so that whenever you ask a question uh, about a user's location or something like that, I'm getting the answer for the user object that is the email address that you sent in. So basically I've kind of done this. Now, most people would do the same thing as a lookup off of the authenticated user. So if you actually configured it with auth, you could do it that way um, and, and go on through. So that's what the first little piece of it, which is how am I getting a user profile and populating that user profile? Then, when we go into the other parts of it, let's talk about, well, I wanted to look up a ticket number. Now, I said before that I, did ha I do have a plug-in action, but it's not being orchestrated to. In other words, I turned off the dynamic chain so that it won't talk directly to this ServiceNow uh, a plug-in action. And instead, I created a prompt, and this prompt comes in and explains that this is where you go to look up an incident number for a ServiceNow ticket. And I also explain that these are also known as service request or support tickets and things of that nature. So this is just the prompt I came up with. Um, you might come up with a better prompt. Now, the next thing I did was I said, well, in order to do that, I need the ticket number. So I ask you the question for the ticket number and you'll notice here that I created an entity called incident num uh, SN for like how a ServiceNow uh, ticket, like what, what is the format of a ServiceNow ticket. So that way, whenever I say my ticket number is, I can just get the ticket number that I want. And then I pass this in and, you, and I wanna show you this because this is sort of the key part. So what I'm doing is I'm concatenating uh, number equals, and then I'm passing in the ticket number that, that I got from you. And this is the way to be able to uh, create a query. So if you think about a ServiceNow table query, you could collect all these different pieces of information. You could form the query however you want. But, but the idea here is that I've got a PowerFX formula that is actually taking care of creating dynamically uh, for the query. And by passing that into the ServiceNow uh, connector, it comes back with the results. And with that, notice I didn't have to tell it, like, here's how I want you to respond or anything like that, because generative AI is taking the response and answering this, this question. 
And because we have orchestrated to it here, the large language model is being taken into consideration in this, not just the last thing I said in activity.txt, but the entire part of the conversational context. So the result of that is I can ask follow-up questions about the ticket and it understands the ticket. And because I've already, I've done entity extraction, it already understands the context of the ticket number that I'm talking about. So let's look at the entity really quick, just so that you can see this. And this is the entity that I created and you'll see it's a simple regex pattern, capital I in NC with a numerical value of zero to nine and seven digits. And that is the default out of the default instance. So that way I can do that entity extraction and be able to get there. Now, because I've done that, we're able to get the ticket number information, pass the ticket number information in and do everything. And so the trick is a combination to get, to fire the intent, collect the information that's needed, then pass it into the plugin action to let it do all the generative AI work for you over top of that API. This will be a common thing anytime you have like a table lookup that you wanna do and you wanna answer questions from, uh, from that table's return result. So just be aware, it will be limited to what is the description of the fields that come back. So you need to make sure you understand that uh, piece of it, but uh, this will work absolutely uh, perfectly for you as you saw before. Now, what I did in my other videos before, where I actually said dynamic chaining, chaining is enabled, and I simply came in and I said, I want the uh, value to always be imperial. And then I came over here and I said that the uh, location I want to dynamically grab, so it can dynamically grab that out of the conversation history as well. And again, the output of it is dynamically generated. And if we look at uh, the service now, when just so that way you can kind of see it, the um, this incident lookup one, let's look at how I have this one configured as well. You'll see that I really don't have to give it a ton of information here because I'm not actually dynamically chaining it. But what I can do is say, here's the inputs. You'll see um, the different inputs that I have here, which is uh, the value and all of these different things. Uh, for the table type, and you can see I'm using the incident table and such. You can then see down here, I, I'm keeping these values as true because uh, one of them keeps keeps it from providing like links in the response and the other one makes it where it doesn't return ones and zeros, but the actual value behind the scenes. And then you'll see here that for the thing that I want to pass in as the query, you'll see I'm gonna say dynamically fill, but by doing that, that is the way that I am able to say that this one is still going to need to be filled in. And then you'll see the output. I'm just saying respond to the user after the action. Now, how do I get this all wired between the two? Just be aware that the way that I'm wiring it in, again, came back to over here. You'll see that you can say set value. And when I say set value, sysparm query was still available because I had said that needed to still be dynamically filled. And you'll see that this is where I'm passing the, the capability here to say, okay, this is the incident number that I collected over here. So hopefully this is super helpful for you guys to kind of see how you can really imagine how you could do this. And you can start thinking about other APIs that you can do this on and all the different kind of combinations that you might want to come up with and really start playing with it and understand the power of a large language model for orchestration. I do this with ServiceNow because of the fact that it's kind of easy. A lot of people understand it, but I'm going to be looking and exploring where we can use this with other systems as well. But I felt like since we had already done a ServiceNow set of videos, it made a lot of sense for me to go back and show you guys if I were going to build this today, how would I go about building it? Because I might build it different than when I recorded my original video back um, back last year. So again, thank you again for coming out and watching the video. I hope it's super helpful. As always, like and subscribe to my channel. And if there's any suggestions you guys may have for additional videos you'd like to see, please put them in the comments below. And thanks again.